this short video is how to install the or configure or enable the globals sorry let's try that again the patient portal in your installation of open era okay so from the top menu go to administration go to globals and when you get to globals go to portal here you can see an array of things that are available for the portal the first thing is to enable portal all right so you want to enable the portal then you would need to set the site address for an external DHCP not DHCP but uh, domain name so for best practices I would change this to whatever your domain name is You can change it to yourdomain.com and leave portal as the subfolder that you're going to go to. But if you want to be really slick with it, you can set a subnet, a sub, yeah, a sub, uh, not a subnet, but a sub address so that it would be portal.yourdomain and then that way users don't see the uh, subdomain is the word I was looking for so you can set up portal as a subdomain to your main domain and then that way people don't have to see the or put in the portal subfolder that is going to be utilized out of some of the other things options you want to take into account is now we have the Google uh, recap show in there so that of course you want to make sure that it's a human logging in and it's not a bot trying to break into your site and then you can in order portal logging that's important in the US for HIPAA reasons and then you can also allow online payments this is uh, by default uh, stripe so if you have a stripe account you can set it up in the system and then you'll be able to take online payments through stripe or the what's that called um, authorized net those are the two that are currently in the system now and let's see you can also allow people to reset their own credentials if you don't do that then if a person if a patient can't remember their password then they would have to ask you to give it to them again so that might be something advantageous to go ahead and set and allow patients to reset their own passwords by the way and it will email them the credentials it won't just put it plus it out on the screen so email the credentials that's to validate the email address and to for security reasons make sure that's the person that's getting the reset request but of course it has to match the email address that is in the patient's account and that's under trusted emails in the patient dashboard I'll show that in just a minute okay so enable patient document downloads so you can either show or hide the documents so any documents that you would attach to a patient's chart just like you would from the document center inside of OPMR the patient will be able to see those same documents so that covers the what's in this section of the patient or enabling the patient portal once you go into the patient's chart you'll see this button here that says reset in this particular case this patient has credentials that are set for the portal if the patient doesn't have portal credentials that are already set then you will see a, a, a button that says that the portal credentials need to be set for this patient. In this case, we don't have a patient. I'm trying to find out, see if we have one in the system that does not have credentials yet. Okay, so here we have patient is not authorized in portal yet. And all that means is that they have no credentials. And in order to give them credentials, you would need to authorize them in their chart. So you would go to edit and you would click on the choices and then you would say portal authorized and you would change this to yes i would also change this to yes for email and then also yes for sms these things need to be set to yes for other functions in the system to kick in and then also like i said under contact you want to put their trusted email address in here so i'm going to slide that one in and okay so that's going to take care of that so when the patient is ready now you see it changes to on-site credentials then you want to click here and this little window pops down the thing to remember about this window here is that the account name is not the login name it does say user login right here and which will be their email address the account name doesn't do anything 
but they would log in with the email address and the password that is given to them if you do it from your side. Now, of course, if you enable patient registration module, then the patient can register on their own, and then you will get an alert that there is a new patient in the portal and that you would need to go and uh, bring that patient in and give them and authorize them onto the system. Okay. Otherwise, if the patient's in the office with you, you can save this and then it will give you a printable version of that page that you can hand to the patient. Okay, and it should email them credentials for this. Now, in order for the email functionality of this portion of the system to work, you need to go to globals and under connectors, set up your, is it connectors? Yeah, let me make sure. I said connectors and so let me do it the other way. So if I go here and put in SMTP, and it doesn't have to be capped, make sure you click this search button because you've just pressed enter, it won't do anything. So, when I, okay, so it's under notifications. Under notifications, see where it's highlighted here, you want to put in your SMTP TP server information. So that way the system can email out using a proper gateway, email gateway, and then your patients will get the emails from us from the EHR. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you click the subscribe and like button.